Okay, we did our um, mini lab on surface tension. The purpose of this lab was to calculate the relative surface tensions of liquids based on its contact angle with the solid surface and the attractive force between the liquid and the solid. Um, so our hypothesis was that water would have larger contact angles with all of the surfaces because water does have a larger surface tension than oil, which is the other thing we tested. And here's some background on um, the uh, contact angle and surface tension. Um, the, sur the contact angle is the result of an equilibrium between the attractive force of the um, solid on the liquid and the surface tension, the force caused by the surface tension of the liquid in the air. Here's a diagram. And this was um, mostly pioneered by um, Thomas Young and Louis Dupre, and so this equation is called the Young-Dupre equation. And yeah, so basically um, you have um, the tension of the uh, water pulling it this way, making it ball up more, and you have the attractive force of the solid pulling it out farther and making it spread out, and so those forces will balance depending on the specific um, liquid and solid interface at a certain angle here. Okay, some materials we used was some filtered water, <coughs> olive oil, painted glass, sheet of aluminum foil, plastic grocery bag, human skin, Owen skin, not anybody else's. It was live Owen skin? <laughs> yes. That's the best. <laughs> Cast iron skillet, hydrophobic spray, phone camera, and a large syringe. And this was the syringe, not like the needle that you get shots with. Here's the spray that I used. It's for um, windshields. Good idea. Procedure? Do you want to just climb that on? Yeah, well, I took a pane of glass from my parents' coffee table, and I sprayed half of it with this. And um, it works instantly, so that was nice. And then I tested um, both water and oil on each of the different surfaces, and I took a picture of it with my phone. And then I upload those pictures to um, analyze them. We have a couple of those to show later. I will show you some of them. Yeah, right now. Um, we, I, I, I encountered some difficulties at this part because Logger Pro doesn't actually have a feature where you can analyze angles. So what I did was I just manually had to draw a tangent line using the measurement tool. So that number is meaningless. I was just, um, and then I just put a point on either end of the line, and using that graph in the photo analysis, I could find the uh, angle that it was making with the, uh, this yellow x-axis. And these are the results that we got. Yeah, and for the most part, the oil, like we predicted, had a smaller contact angle than the water did with all of these objects. So our hypothesis turned out to be correct. And here's some <coughs> cool data that we got. Notice that oh, the uh, shiny side of aluminum has a much smaller contact angle than the dull side. And I think that the explanation for that is that shiny side of aluminum a lot more of the, um, on a microscopic scale, a lot more of the aluminum is in contact with the fluid because there's less small crevices and things where the surface tension would prevent it from entering them. Yeah, because so they're more reflective, there's because, more. Yeah, because there's more contact, there's more of an attractive force pulling it out. And here's yeah. the difference between the uh, hydrophobic spray and the normal glass. It was about a 37 degree difference. Yeah. So we got about 97 degrees <coughs> spray there. Yeah, because when it's over 90 degrees. When it's over 90 degrees, it's considered hydrophobic. Yeah. I was particularly uh, struck by that over 90 degrees thing. It like it doesn't want to hang out with the surface at all. Is that what you're saying? It would rather bulge than touch that nasty surface. Yeah, right? it's not like one where it's completely not spreading out at all but it's hydrophobic enough that it still tries to get away. Well, we, we calculated the uh, attractive energies. So we, I can show you on a graph here the difference between normal glass 
and the glass with spray. It's like maybe a little more than a third reduction in the attractive force. And so the reason it was hydrophobic is because the surface tension of the water was actually more, um, it was more powerful than the surface tension, sorry, with the air, it was more powerful than with the um, solid. And notice it didn't work at all with oil because the spray is actually oil-based. So it actually increased the attractive energy a little bit. Yeah, our sources of air um, use surface tension of glycerol in place of olive oil. We can really find olive oil per se on any website to get a good standard number. So we just found a material that was in there and used that. There was some dirt on surfaces, obviously, so that could have a big effect on that partially. Um, the surfaces were not totally flat, so that could lead to the water kind of falling up naturally because it wants to go into itself when there is some force pulling it there because of gravity. And then we did not account for hysteresis, the difference between advancing and receding angles. When, is that related to like the LED turning off uh, more gradually than it would turn on sharply? Like, like a it's already there kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Like, if you have a whole bunch of water spread out, there will be a much less contact angle with the part of the glass that previously had water on it. So, but what I tried to do was make sure it was totally clean and I put it on very slowly so that it was the very first spot, or the very first time when the water was, when the drop stopped, so that there was, there was all roughly equal. Thank you. <laughs> Sam, you just missed the heck of the presentation. Any questions? I think it's because it well, them found it but can't go get it by um, Jessica Sonich. Balancing the, uh, well, we had an equation. Yeah, we, we had an equation. I don't, think. I don't think we put this on a slide, but basically it takes the um, contact angle, multiplies that by cosine. Well, yeah, it's within it's cosine. cosine of yeah, it's cosine of the contact angle, and then we're using the surface tension the surface with tension. air times 1 plus the cosine of the contact angle is what we use. Okay. Yeah. So the contact angle was just a way of finding the adhesive energy. Yes. yes. The okay. contact angle depends on the balance of the forces. If you have a greater contact angle, it's much less adhesive energy. Jessica? I apologize for the potentially silly question, but could you redefine contact angle for me? The contact angle? Yeah, let's go to the picture just make it simple. Okay, so the contact angle, you see um, when the water is on the surface, it kind of balls up a little bit. Yeah. So the contact angle is, you see like the point right where it's converging with the table. Mm -hmm. That's right off there, that's the contact angle. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. I've never seen anything like it. Thank you.